Hi, my name is Israel. I wanted to talk a little bit about racing, like a, like a quick racing guide. So yesterday we uh, had the second camel race. He's a gamer who sets up races for the community and um, it was a lot of fun. This was the character I did. It was a Stormbrand Elementalist. I practiced three times before the race and um, I died in all the practice attempts. Step one and um, died in the real race too. Died at level 67. Um, let's see. And uh, I, I wanted to make like a guide for those of you who are new to racing and want to try to get into it a little bit about what I do, how I do it, and why I do it. So, skill tree wise, you got to be a little flexible. This isn't something I can go like, this is what you have to do. Because it's going to vary depending on what you find in gear wise. So first I pretty much always rush straight to the agility node here. That's because the first gem that I... You also want to be very heavy on picking up blues and rares early on to get enough transmutes. Um, if you find a jade amulet early on you don't need to pick up the 30 agility. 30 dex. Um, so I buy Stormbrand and uh, Blade Vortex. I actually try to get level 12 before my veil by doing fair grace fairly early so I can um, so I can just blade vortex down my veil instead of explosive trap. Um, after getting this I go for elemental overload, then down here straight for holy dominion, light of divinity, then amplify, then I go here and for a while I was actually going straight after rune binder. However, uh, the storm man itself is sort of doing enough damage that I started going for celestial judgment and punishment first, and then rune binder. This not you're not going to be single targeting with your storm run anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you have two of them. Um, after that, I take the minion nodes. If you don't know how they work, it basically as soon as you have spiritual aid, uh, any increases and reductions to minion damage also affect you. So for example, all those nodes make you more damage. This one. 10% increased damage and lets you travel through here as well. You don't really need AoE, I felt, on Stormman. So it was pretty nice. Um, after I filled out the Templar side, I take Quick Recovery. And then I think I took... It depends on your life, but I want to be around 800, 900 life for Malachi. If I'm not, I take Heart and Soul and then Explosive Runes and then Mental Rapidity. Then I travel up here. Um, I had a lot of life gear. So I had like 1.8k life, I think, for Akten Kitaba, which is quite a lot. I was pretty happy with it, so I went straight for Nimbleness. And then the dex point here, and then I took... I think I actually took Runesmith before I written Nimblood. So... Yeah. And I don't actually have anything to proc Elemental Overload, by the way. That's just that the Stormman attacks so fast that you're generally getting a crit. That's pretty much summed up the skill, skill tree. So this was for a level 85 race. I would have just continued going here. Um, I don't think there's many more brand nodes I could take. But um, you kind of run out of damage nodes pretty quickly. I think I would have just gone life after this, to be honest. Maybe some lightning nodes if I got really desperate. But again, it was for an 85 race. So there's not too much to take. You do have life nodes here as well. Um... Gem setup wise, early on I start with Freezing Pulse and Onslaught and Frostbomb and Onslaught as soon as you're level 4. So you're mostly using, um, if I show an example while we're doing this, you're mostly using Frostbomb and Onslaught early on. So the way you do that in a race, and I'll show you now, is you're, you're always moving. It's the like, important part. And while we're talking about this as well, the way you get Onslaught on a Witch is that you... Um, you go to, uh, what you call it? You go make a new Scion, and Scion gets Onslaught as the support gem it gets on the um, on the beach. So as soon as you get level 4, you really want to look out for a blue-blue-green wand as well. And um, even if you just get a blue-green. But yeah, all you do is you literally try to like position it so that it's going to hit the monsters by the time it explodes. And you keep moving like this. Once you have two of the spell damage nodes, you should be one-shotting most things, even in ledge. And you just keep running like this. So the main goal is to just keep your onslaught up as much as possible. Um, and then you just keep running. A lot of a lot of the thing with racing is muscle memory. Um, spending less time on gear. Whenever I make a new character just to play at endgame in like Betrayal Hardcore, 
It usually takes me more to level that than a solo self find character without gear in a ranks because you're spending so little time on gear and you're just rushing. Um, like a twink down run is fast if you have every gear set uh, ahead of time. But if you're like buying stuff and changing gear as you go, it's it's takes an incredible time to do gear management. So a lot of it is just muscle memory. I wouldn't worry too if you're trying to race and getting near racing. I wouldn't worry too much about what other people are doing time wise. I would just try keep beating yourself until you get within like 30 minutes of other racers and then start focusing on their timers. But if you start early on comparing yourself to others, you're gonna um, you're gonna feel pretty bad. Um, layout wise, you start off by going um, on a witch. This is so this is mostly focused on witch racing. Uh, which I'm fairly new to. I'm usually a duelist for races, but the meta's changed a lot there. So I go and do the Mudflats quest first and get the Submerged Waypoint. Once I click the Submerged Waypoint, I go straight to um, the coast and then do Hail Rig. The reason for that is then I can go back to town and get the Quicksilver and Frost Bomb at the same time. You also um, want to want to check for blue blue green ones like this and you also want to check for movement speed on the vendor i'm very very bad at checking for movement speed on the vendor so just search you can have that you can have this already copy pasted in like have it on your control v you just control v that in um something that's really good early on is to make it plus one lightning one when you get a blue blue green so something i do is as soon as i find an iron ring the spectral throw from the scion or just any green gem, but you know, you, you get a spectral throw from the Scion. You just turn that into a Topaz ring, and then as soon as you have an alteration and a spare transmute, you do need two transmutes, so you, that's why you got to pick up so many blues. Then you sell a transmute, or oh, sorry, an alteration, a Topaz, and you get a plus one lightning. And this is going to be really, really high um, damage early on in your Act 2, so you're going to go really fast. So you'd be doing Stormbrand, Added lightning and onslaught, um, and I I always try to even a one link BV is fine for single target because you slap down your storm run and then start call it calling your uh, BV down. Um, trying to think, picking up more iron rings and using you get a fireball gem as a witch. Using that on an iron ring to make a cold ring early on can be really good against Mermail. You can basically face tank her. You don't have to worry. Yeah, make sure that the wand is magic. It can't be rare, it can't be white. As for Quicksilver, you want to try to use all the charges between Flame Dash and Quicksilver between leveling up. Because you get full fast charges when leveling up, so you don't want to level up while you have a full bottle, or any charges in your bottle. Um, other things to mention. Um... Try to pretty early in Act 2 get like 30 to 40 all rest. This is also, I help Alira, by the way. Even though it's a um, not a crit build, I still help Alira. And that's because you just want to get resist early on. This is my, this is the character I had in the race. So like, I was pretty happy with my gear. I was 2.7k life and I was about to get these nodes. Not sure what I would have done after. Maybe this, because there's no traveling. That one and like just fill out the life nodes. Oh, actually, I probably would have gone for the chaos ones. It was a betrayal. Uh, I was very happy with my gear. I would have like 3.5k, maybe 4k at level 85. Um, and I got a crazy stat from doing incursion. Um, this was from the boss. The reason I did the uh, incursion temple was because there was so many good outcomes of me doing it. Um, there was I could get like a there was. Two or three different belts. Like I could get the um, the class speed belt, the movement speed belt, or I think there's one more belt I could get that's decent. Um, and then there's like a lot of like any minion damage stuff or weapon, any lightning damage stuff or weapon. To be fair, even any cold because they have so much flat added on them. Um, and then I also got an amulet, which is pretty beastly. So I figured there was so many good outcomes. So what I did was I opened a path to the boss and did things like vault rooms and stuff. After that, I just ignored it. I would open the incursion and then keep moving. Um, movement speed boots is pretty important. I didn't really care enough about crafting movement speed early. That slowed me down by at least 10 minutes behind the other racers. Definitely like research a little bit and look into what like 
crafts you can do? Do you know the new system? Like flat added damage on rings? I don't think you get actually until you unveil things. Um, so ignore that, but yeah. Um, there there are a lot of good uh, like crafts like yeah, movement speed you get. I think you get to tier 2 on the way to Innocence. I can't remember where you get tier 1 right now. But um, crafting movement speed on boots is huge. Otherwise, got pretty lucky with my rings. The belt was okay. Helm was great. Picking up an early four link is huge. So that pretty much sums that up. Quicksilvers. I actually did the den quest to get a second Quicksilver. I would skip the den if you find a second Quicksilver before then. Before then. Um, and you want to pick up a granite as soon as you can. I do like a jade as well, but granite for the storyline. Like, there's so many things I can one-shot you. In one of the pre uh, race practices, I got one-shot by a crit from Garu Khan, which would have been fine if I had a granite flask. Uh, I'd probably be dual wielding if it wasn't uh, for this staff. Oh, well, I did have a shield. I don't have it here. Uh, I did have a shield actually, which was 60 life and like 50 rest or something. Um, speaking of res, if you do need more res while leveling, it's nothing wrong with taking um, the res nodes here, especially Lightning Walker when you're Storm Run. So, second weapon set. Oh, yeah, this was the shield I used. This was the shield I used. So this is cast speed life and represents spell damage and this was the scepter I used. So it was really good but this is like 200 more damage and since I'm not an inquisitor I wasn't planning on shield charging because it's a bit slow. Um, gem setups. I'll, I'll leave this character for a while. Sister and please do not die. Or please don't die sorry. And uh, you can see the gem setups that I was using for endgame mapping here. So, Lightning Spire, you want to buy that as soon as you kill Gravacious. If you don't have a chance or by then, you can buy one from Clarissa for a fusing, which is what I did. And then, even though one link, Lightning Spire, is really good. I use Elemental Focus, Control Destruction, and added Lightning. Um, as soon as I get a blue, blue, red, I set up Curse on Hit, Warlord's Mark, and Herald of Thunder. That's at level 38 or above. I want to talk a little bit about War Banner. So, War Banner is pretty much a new gamer jewel. I'll show you how that works right now. Obviously, I'm going to be one-shotting everything anyway, so this is just an example. Um, but I was using this in maps as well. I would have my normal heralds, and then I would have War Banner. The way it works is it doesn't really do much that I care about while it's on my back like this. Or every time I kill something, I get a War Banner stage. This goes up to 50. Um, and now... Once this is at 50, that gives you adrenaline when you plant it down for around 2 seconds, I think. On placing the banner. Yeah. So basically, the way that works is... Uh, but here's the boss, right? As soon as I pop down the war banner there, I have 100% increased damage for 2 seconds. So that is insane. Um, with with like a few other rares or uniques, that was enough for me to burst them down just using War Banner. And for any boss, like um, especially bosses with one stage, like Lunaris and and or sorry, like the you know the Lunar Guard, Solar Guard, whatever they're called, uh, anything with one stage like that is it's just insane. Hundred percent increased damage, very very big while uh, while doing like the storyline and the quest bosses. Um, Massive for Dodri, by the way, which only has one stage. So on Dodri, I would just run in. I would, as soon as she's jumped, I put three lightning spires down, and then boom, war banner, and she just disappears, disappears. Um, so that was that was really really big. This is something I just started using on my like second or third practice run because when Trur was like, hey, this is, you might want to look into war banner, and I thought it sounded a bit complicated and annoying to keep remembering, but you you get used to it fairly quickly. There's a few times where I didn't remember to like re-enable the RS gain stacks, but very, very worth using. Um, mostly just using Flame Dash. I also keep, what do you call it? Where is it? Oh, I don't have it right now actually, but usually they have a level one Arcane Surge. You can probably have it higher than level one. I would like level four or something. Uh, at your brand recall. And that basically just gives you permanent Arcane Surge, which is more damage as well. You sort of got to use everything you can because you're going to be so, so behind on like gear and gems. Uh, I 
Let's see, what else? Decoy totem is something you can use. I didn't end up needing it because of Warbanner doing so much damage and Stormbrand having like so much freedom to just run around. I didn't use it. If you do want to use it, you need to use the multiple totem support because you are getting the minus one totem node. So you need a two red, which can be pretty hard to get in a race scenario. That's that's another thing, like uh, which is hard. Like you don't have a lot of the gem setups or slots. So I'd say priority wise, like the the really want a three or four link storm run for clearing. Also, I used all the way until as soon as I get cruel lab. So normal lab, I send it really early. Basically, as soon as I get normal. Sorry, as soon as I get Lightning Spire, I send Normal Lab. And then Cruel Lab, I do literally right after I get Gerust for the Solar Relicash. If you don't know, this gives you 25% less damage taken from Lab Traps, makes it a lot safer. And I had so much damage. Now, in the race itself, I got commented that I did Merc Lab really early. I apparently did it before anyone else by a large margin. And it was a bit of a risky decision, but I felt like I had so much damage. I think this was before I got my shaft as well. And it was a bit of a risky decision, but I had so much confidence in my damage. And I feel like, you know, you just slap down these, do a recall, and as soon as the Zara's jumped, you throw down three storm runs. Um, for a while, I was also using Conduit. And uh, yeah, I, I felt very happy with my damage. Uh, once I have that, so I like this Shaper of Desolation is your normal lab, you like, will notice a big damage increase from the Shocking. Um, and then Beacon of Ruin is the um, lab. Once you get Beacon, I put in Ice Bite, and that will start shattering packs. So I, can, I can show you real quick as well on the next area. And uh, you, you'll notice instantly the packs start shattering. And the reason for that is because you get a 15% chance to freeze. And once any monster in a pack freezes, that prolifts and freezes all of them. And then your hair device will explode and it's a nice little reaction. So you should be able to see um, quite a lot shattering here. Especially in like, especially more so in maps, because you do get that same effect where these might be like through the way. I don't even know. But it, if you look in, uh, I can go do a map actually. Um, it was shattering very, very nicely. I think we might be on a free link right now. Yeah, we are. Um, so I'll show, I'll show that real quick in maps. But uh, it was going incredibly quick. So white bone crypt here. Um, like the bigger the pack, the better, because you only do have a 15% chance to freeze. So you do need to actually freeze something. And then you can see that like pretty much every like large pack is getting shattered. Can struggle a little bit on the larger enemies, like you saw the big. I don't really know what they are. Centauri things? They. Uh, and like the big skeletons as well, you can struggle a little bit on them. But like anything smaller, you should be shattering the majority of the time. We don't actually have that much cold damage. But it is it's definitely doing a good job. And you are like chilling everything, and yeah, most things get frozen. It's nice. This would probably stop freezing most mobs around level 8 with my current damage. I'm only on a 4 lane. And uh, I had... I'll show the war banner thing on the boss here, actually. Boss up here? Yeah. So, what I would do is I would throw down 3 like this. Boom. You can see it just absolutely evaporates the boss. Wasn't taking that much damage, and then I throw down War Banner, and you get a hundred percent increase on all your damage. And uh, this, I had no problem with any map boss at all. So it took me around for racing times. It took me around. I don't remember how long my Kitava was now. I think it was three hours and fifty minutes or something to Kitava. And. Um, we were doing like pretty well schedule wise. We were top 10 the entire time. I was taking a little longer than others to make sure that I had enough gear. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with how the race went. Want to practice more. And uh, I just wanted to make this guide to like give some like tips and tricks. Well, the only other things I can think of is try to roll an instant life loss at least by 18 to 24. Instant life loss is huge, like either a bubbling or a seething. 
And then, what else? Not sure what else do you bring up, except try to roll some flasks. Yeah, bleedy bindy, stuff like that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, drop by Scissoring on Twitch. Thanks for watching. Try to die less than I do.